dear friends. It's such a pleasure to be here on the occasion of Gandhiji's birth anniversary at a place that I've always held dear in my heart. And I left Washington in 1995 and went halfway across the world and here I am back again. And I always treasured and carried the memory of my experience and my friendship with all at the Gandhi Memorial Center. And everywhere I went, and Kamlaji just mentioned it, uh, in Lima or whether it was Beijing or Colombo, uh, there was always the occasion because every year we would celebrate Gandhiji's birthday. And uh, that was always an opportunity for me to reconnect with the Gandhi Center. Uh, I would, you know, phone you for perhaps music, a sheet music of Lead Kindly Light or the journal that uh, you wrote out. This was before the days of internet, or internet was still in, in its infancy. So we still use the telephone a great deal. And uh, I would always um, value uh, you know, the, the benefit of that opportunity to interact with you, even if it was a, for a very brief time. But it brought back all the memories of our friendship and, and the beautiful hours that I spent here. I used to come here when Ambassador Ray would speak at Gandhi Jayanti. So it seems a long time ago, but the memory of that is so fresh in my mind. I remember the 125th birth anniversary of Gandhiji, uh, the celebration at the Kennedy Center. And uh, all of us uh, were involved with that, and I see so many familiar faces. So uh, it's a, it, this is a wonderful moment for me, and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to come here and speak to you today. In fact, the Gandhi Center has been a long-standing partner of the Embassy of India. And as I said just now, our association with it over the years has proved to be such an enduring partnership. And why is it so? It's because it's rooted in the shared goal of promoting Gandhiji's message and his legacy, a legacy that has grown from strength to strength. And for me, as I said, it's a personal association because the Gandhi Center and Srimati Kamlaji are very special to me. And I'd like to thank and congratulate Carrie Tribulek, director of the Gandhi Center, for her profound commitment. It's amazing to see this depth of commitment in such a young person. I think you really uh, are a role model for the young generation. And your dedication to the lofty cause of furthering Gandhian ideals and philosophy in this country is truly special. And Kamlaji, of course, has been a driving force in this effort, and your lifelong devotion to Gandhiji's ideals and to this center is really unparalleled. As we remember Gandhiji today and recall his principles and ideals, one question that crosses our mind is, how would Gandhiji have viewed the world of the 21st century? What would he write today in the Indian Opinion or the Harijan, journals where he often expressed his inner voice. Can you visualize an electronic version or a Facebook or Twitter account for these journals? I certainly can, because Gandhiji was a communicator par excellence. How would he have reflected on the Eurozone crisis or the Arab Spring or the terrorist attacks of 9-11 in this country and of 26-11 in Mumbai? What would he have to say about the information highway, hyperlinks, social media, and internet search engines which pretend to think like God? How would Gandhiji apply the precepts of his ideals and values to explain or search for an answer to these and myriad other challenges that confront us today. How do we establish the relevance of his thoughts 
for this our century. That is not to say that these thoughts are not relevant or that we doubt that they are not. But looking to answer that question will perhaps tell us how we can discover new paths for global peace and human progress, navigating through the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century. Let me begin by recalling five iconic individuals who have believed in Gandhiji's ideas. They were, and are, inspired by the Gandhian philosophy of humanism, compassion, and non-violence. They showed courage and conviction in standing up to adversity and embracing the truth. They, in their own way, became the change that they wanted to see in the world. And they did so decades after Gandhiji had lived and walked on our planet. One of them dared to have a dream of equality, opportunity, and liberty, and to heal a nation wounded by racial segregation. Inspired by Gandhiji, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. saw the spirit of the historic Salt March at Dundee resonating in his own courageous Montgomery bus boycott. Martin Luther King said, and I quote, as I read, I became deeply fascinated by his campaigns of nonviolent resistance. As I delved deeper into the philosophy of Gandhiji, my skepticism concerning the power of love gradually diminished, and I came to see for the first time its potency in the area of social reform." Unquote. Another man, lovingly called Madiba by his compatriots, and whom the world knows as Nelson Mandela, emulated Gandhiji in choosing to suffer a long incarceration in order to humble a tyrannical regime. He empowered his people, but told them never to hate their oppressors. He ended apartheid by showing the power of courage and truth as he laid the foundations of a new era in South Africa and promoted a path of reconciliation. The third icon, who was admired in both India and the United States and across the world for her fearless nonviolent resistance is Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi who I was privileged to meet personally when I visited Yangon in June last year, when I was the Foreign Secretary of India. She has often acknowledged Gandhiji's influence in a life that she has dedicated to freedom and democracy. Referring to the impact that Gandhian values have had on her own life, Suchi asked students while speaking at Columbia University last month to, I quote, Remember that change through nonviolent means was not ever thought of before Gandhi. He was the one who started it. He was the one who decided that it is possible to bring about revolutionary change without violence. The more you read Gandhi, the more impressed you are by who he was and what he was. Unquote. From Gandhiji, she learned that for a doctrine of peace and reconciliation to be translated into practice, one absolute condition is to be fearless. One of the essays Aung San Suu Kyi wrote begins with the sentence, I quote, it is not power that corrupts, it is fear, unquote. She was and remains the beacon of peace and hope for her compatriots as Myanmar embarks on a new and historic journey. Gandhiji has been a great light for another great spiritual leader who, much like the Mahatma, uniquely blends spiritualism with humanism, religiosity with courage, and faith with conviction. His Holiness the Dalai Lama views the success of Gandhian philosophy in its most tangible outcomes. He says, I quote, many ancient masters have preached ahimsa nonviolence as a philosophy. That was a mere philosophical understanding. 
but Mahatma Gandhi in the 20th century produced a very sophisticated approach because he implemented that very noble philosophy of ahimsa in modern politics and he succeeded. That is a very great thing. And finally, President Barack Obama, speaking before India's parliament in November 2010 about how he was influenced and inspired by Mahatma Gandhi, President Obama said, I quote, I am mindful that I might not be standing before you today as President of the United States had it not been for Gandhi and the message he shared with and inspired America and the world, unquote. It is no coincidence that all these five personalities who embodied in one way or the other Gandhiji's ideas and ideals were recognized long after the death of Mahatma Gandhi for their contributions to global peace and harmony. Each of them went on to be a Nobel Peace Prize laureate. Each of them in his or her own way also proves the relevance of Gandhiji and his philosophy in the modern world in most incontrovertible ways. They demonstrate that Mahatma Gandhi is inspired and will continue to inspire political, social, and religious wisdom over and over again to successive generations all over the world. Indeed, I would dare say that there is hardly any country in the world where Gandhiji's passion for nonviolence and his supreme humanism is not inspiring people, transcending the divisions of race, religion, and ethnicity. If the 21st century is the century of the common man and woman, then Gandhiism has even more relevance in inspiring individuals wanting to be agents of change as they strive to make their societies and this world a better place. Always leading by example, Gandhiji taught us to stand strong in the face of fear and hold fiercely our faith in truth and freedom, even when confronted with extremism, brutality, or prejudice. Gandhiji once said, I quote, a small body of determined spirits fired by an unquenchable faith in their mission can alter the course of history. Today, more than ever before, because of the world we find ourselves in and the many instances of violence we've seen in recent times, many around the globe feel the need to remember and implement yet again Gandhiji's message of peace and nonviolence. Gandhiji once said, I quote, once we recognize the common parent stock from which we are sprung, we realize the basic unity of the human family, and there is no room for enmity and unhealthy competition. As we deal with the threats and acts of terrorism and violent extremism in the world today, we need to look for effective ways and solutions as that truth force to urge humankind away from mindless vendettas, bloodshed, retribution, and conflict. Here lies the critical relevance of Gandhiji's message in the contemporary world. Let us not forget how he inspired Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, or the frontier Gandhi as he is lovingly known, to advocate and practice nonviolent resistance among the Pathans of the Northwest frontier. Today, when we contemplate the troubled border regions of Afghanistan and Pakistan, we scarcely realize the his, that the history of these areas offers, as Karl Mayer has noted, an extraordinary precedent for peace personified by the frontier Gandhi, besides the legacy of war that we see before our eyes every day. At the United Nations General Assembly last week, rejecting religious and cultural intolerance, President Obama said, it is time to heed the words of Gandhi Intolerance is itself a form of violence and an obstacle to the growth of the true democratic spirit. We must work towards a world where we are strengthened by our differences and not defined by them. 
Gandhiji led a life suffused by simplicity, and that was mentioned earlier today, and marked by his acute sense of self-awareness, ridding himself of unnecessary possessions, and turning simply to the basics and to value them. His ways show us the power of the immeasurable reserves of humility and compassion that exist within the human mind. His respect for diversity and the human in all of us led him to work tirelessly for the upliftment of the weak as part of the larger nation-building exercise. As the Indian historian Ramachandra Guha said in his address to the UN General Assembly on 2nd October last year to mark Gandhiji's birth anniversary, and I quote, Gandhi was and remains a genuinely transnational figure. He was transnational in the range of his influences and the reach of his thought, unquote. Gandhiji believed in many ideas inherent in a globalized world order. He stood for connectedness and connectivity, for openness and transparency, for simplicity of communication, for sharing of knowledge, and for the cross-pollination of thoughts and ideas, all of which he saw as essential ingredients for nurturing diversity, pluralism, and common prosperity. He abhorred closed minds and ghetto mentalities. Instead, he believed in synergy and cooperation, even with adversaries. He saw the world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower. But he did warn us of blind emulation and of making choices without judging the merits of each idea. He said, I do not want my house to be walled in on all sides and my windows to be stuffed. I want the cultures of all lands to be blown about my house as freely as possible. But I refuse to be blown off my feet by any. Ladies and gentlemen, there is therefore an undeniable and essential universality about Gandhian ideas and ideals that were, are, and will remain relevant across generations. Some of them, perhaps, will be even more relevant today and in the future than they have been in the past. Let us pledge today to try and live by those principles and ideas to make this world a better and happier place for coming generations. I leave you today with Gandhiji's own words, I quote, you must not lose faith in humanity. Humanity is an ocean. If a few drops of the ocean are dirty, the ocean does not become dirty. We live in hope of a better world and we strive for peace through our actions. No one better exemplified this than Gandhiji himself. And as we gather here today, to celebrate his life, let us take the time to reflect and move ahead, seeking this reality. I wish the Gandhi Memorial Center every success in its continued endeavor to enlighten our friends in America about the timeless importance of Gandhian thought and values in our daily lives. Thank you. God bless you all.